it's been a little while since I started my starter deck series, so I figure maybe it's a good idea to go ahead and return to it. For those who don't remember, the starter deck series was an attempt to try to build something akin to the starter decks that Wizards of the Coast used to make. And, well, the problem with these decks is they don't really exist anymore. I mean, you can still find some backstock of them on store shelves, but... As of right now, it doesn't seem like Wizards is planning on making any more of these, and I really, really think that's a shame, because these are probably one of the best way to start playing Commander. Whereas most Commander decks now are very, very new player unfriendly, in that they don't have an eye towards making sure that players are able to understand base mechanics, they have an eye instead towards making sure that established players have something very, very good and very powerful they can play with, I think these decks will always have a place for new players to start out with. They are less mechanically dense, they have very straightforward strategies, and they are very easy to understand, and they give a very, very fun way to start building from them. When Wizards of the Coast did this, we had a flying deck, a zombie deck, a tokens deck, a chaos deck, and a dragons deck. Two tribal decks, one focused strategy, and two more esoteric ones in the flying and chaos decks. This meant that people really could start however they want, and I only think that one of these decks was really a dud. The flying deck was just not really well designed, it didn't make a whole lot of sense. But that all said, I do want to see more of these decks exist, so let's go ahead and try to build one ourselves. For those who may not remember, the goal of this series was to create starter decks at the same price point that Wizards of the Coast was originally selling them for. With that aim in mind, we've managed to get this deck built for about $20, which is the same price point that the starter decks were supposed to be, give or take a few pennies. That way, there is functionally no difference between picking up one of these decks and picking up one of the official Wizards of the Coast ones in terms of money that is spent from your own pocket. Let me introduce you all to the Fairy Fire Build Your Own Starter Deck. And again, I want to go ahead and thank Trigger for making the template for this. They have really come in handy for these videos. Anyway, let's get into the core strategy of how this deck is going to function. The commander for today's starter deck video is going to be Obira Dreaming Duelist. Now, Obira is a Demir commander with flash, so she comes out at instant speed whenever you want and flying, and whenever another fairy enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent will lose one life. Now, I picked Obira for a couple of reasons. One, she is very straightforward. It's super easy for a new player to pick her up and understand what she's trying to do at a glance. All she wants to do is summon fairies to the board and win by summoning fairies. Very simple, very easy, very, very clean. Also, as she is a low mana cost commander, a new player gets to play their commander on turn two usually and feel really good about that play. So let's go ahead and go into the strategy of what we are going to be doing. First of all, we want to go ahead and have a little bit of burn to supplement what Obira is doing. So we will have a Nightshade Schemers in the deck, which says flying for 3-2 and has kinship. At the beginning of your upkeep, you can look at the top card of your library. If it shares a creature type with the Schemers, each opponent will lose two life. This means that a new player will always be able to get free burn even without their commander. Then we have the Skimfar Shadow Sage, which will reward a player for playing their deck properly. When it touches the battlefield, each opponent will lose X life, where X is the greatest number of creatures we control that have a creature type in common. Or they can gain that life if they desperately need that life as well. I think Skemzar, uh, Skemfar Shadow Stage is a wonderful way to cap off a player's game when they have already been doing very, very well. Also, for any of the other fairies that are in our deck, we have a couple copy cards that also double as being fairies in their own right if we want to go ahead and get more copies of other cool stuff that is on our board. Archmage of Echoes has flying in Ward 2, and anytime we cast a fairy or wizard permanent spell, we will be allowed to copy the spell. This is, again, like with every other card we're going to try to use in this deck, very, very straightforward. It gets on the board, it protects itself for a newer player, so they don't 
don't have to solve that puzzle very much. And the Archmage of Echoes is already going to be giving massive payoffs to the fairy player. We also have the Malleable Imposter that has flash, flying, and it can enter the battlefield as a copy of a creature an opponent controls, but it turns it into a fairy as well. Meaning if a new player is trying to look at the board and figure out what the board state is, this will give them incentive to do so. I find that newer players do tend to struggle a bit with trying to figure out what is actually on the board. Three other players on the table means that there's a lot to try to take into account. Malleable Imposter forces them to figure that out very, very quickly. And for that, I think it does a wonderful, wonderful job. Also, we want to be able to summon fairy tokens in our deck to supplement what our commander is doing, so a fey wild visitor is being included as well. Not only will this incentivize them to have their uh, commander on the board as often as possible, but it has a hidden trick with it, a hidden lesson, if you will. A new player will grab this card and attack one opponent with a lot of fairies and get a 1-1 blue fairy, burning everybody and feeling pretty good about that exchange. However, the minute that another player at the table points out to them, actually, you can attack everybody and trigger this ability up to three times. At that exact moment, there will be an aha feeling for that new player, and Feywild Visitor will have done its job. Not only is it supplementing the deck strategy, but it's going to teach people about the whenever one or more deals damage clause that so many cards have that we can abuse by hitting multiple players. Past that, there's going to be a very huge generic fairy section. I like having these generic sections in these starter decks because these are cards that don't require a whole lot of thinking. If you have seven new cards in your hand that you have never seen before in your life, you're going to take a lot of time to read them and figure out what they are doing, what they are saying, and what you can even manage to do in a turn with them. I think it's very important to give people a lot of simple cards in the beginning that they can learn from. That will allow them to have more fun playing the games and a little less time trying to figure out how the hell to even get cards on the board. So let's begin with the Borrow Naughty. This is a two mana fairy that says it has lifelink as long as you have another fairy. It has a built-in pump as well. And then we have Briarberry Cohort. It gets 1-1 one, one as long as you have another blue creature. Cloud Sprite has uh, flying and can only block creatures that have flying. Very simple. Dream Thief, when it comes into play, draw a card if you've played another blue spell. Fairy Vandal says when you draw your second card, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Fairy Seer says when it enters the battlefield, scry 2. Fairy Blade Crafter says when one or more fairies you control deal damage to a player, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. And if it dies, each opponent will lose X life and you will gain x life where x is its power this is another way to try to get more and more fairies on the board and reward a player if a new player puts this on the board and realizes that oh every turn i can get three extra uh, counters on this and cause my opponents to slowly lose the game even if they have enough life to spare this ticking time bomb will be on the board for them to uh, try to figure out this card will quickly become a favorite of whichever new player you are giving this deck too. Eye Collector is here to just be a 1-1 one, one easy fairy. It also has a mill effect that isn't super necessary to worry about. Nightshade Stinger can't block, but it is a 1-1 one, one flying fairy. Night Veil vale Sprite has a surveil trigger when it attacks. Oko's Accomplices is a vanilla flying fairy. Una's Prowler is a vanilla flying fairy for all intents and purposes, but introduces a little bit of politicking to the game that the player playing it doesn't have to really pay attention to. Tomb Raider says when it enters the battlefield, you can draw a card, which makes it a wonderful card for new players players, cards that replace themselves are always welcome. Surveilling Sprite says when it is put into a graveyard from play, you can draw a card, meaning that players don't get punished for playing it to, at the wrong time. Sentinels of Glen Alendra is a flash and flying fairy. Sea Sprite is a flying fairy that has protection from red, which will come up in some niche cases, but will also introduce new players to the idea of protection. Wasp Lancer has flying and nothing else. Widen the Biting Gale has flash and flying and the ability to bounce itself to the hand if it needs to. Like with a lot of cards I tried to put into these starter decks, if a new player ignores this secondary ability, it will not hurt their gameplay, but they will gain more if they remember to bounce this repeatedly in order to get free burns off of the commander. Then we have Zephyr Sprite, which is a one mana, one, one with flying. Again, very, very simple. 
To supplement these little fairies, though, we do need to have some ability to pump them up. So there is a four card Lords and Anthem section in here as well, beginning with Glen Elendra Liege. Glen Elendra Liege says that all blue uh, creatures get one, one and all black creatures get one, one on your board. So the commander will be a four, four. The Glen Elendra will not benefit from these at all, but most fairies in the deck will get one extra power and one extra toughness. However, some of them, like Wyden and Wasp Lancer, will get doubling ups of this effect. Scion of Una says other fairies get 1-1 one, one and also gives them Shroud, which is incredibly helpful. Spirit uh, Sprite Noble also says that all your other creatures get 0-1 unless you tap it and give them all 1-0 until end of turn. This will give your new player a little bit of a combat trick to think about every now and again. Then we have Tegwil, the Duke of Splendor, which gives all fairies 1-1, one, one, and if any of our fairies die we can draw a card and lose one life again replacing those cards for the newer player and there is one planeswalker in this deck because i try to include one in any starter deck that i am building and that is vraska scheming gorgon it's plus two will give all of our fairies extra power which is important for the deck's win condition and it also has the ability to remove a problematic creature from the board if need be and that negative 10 giving all of your creatures death touch and if they deal combat damage to a player they lose the game is a very tantalizing way to have a new player see a line to win any particular game and i think planeswalkers create fun political situations for new players anyway where they are trying to figure out when they can defend them when they should be attacking and if it is in fact beneficial to try to get to that final ability on the planeswalker with that all said let's go ahead and talk about how our new player is going to be getting through the rest of their deck now, while it is very important for any player to be able to draw through the cards in their deck to be able to, you know, play the game, it's doubly important for new players because one of the problems with Magic is that it is such a complicated game. And if players feel like they don't have access to cards to play, then the ability for them to stay with this game uh, shrinks a bit by bit every single time they pick up a deck of cards. So let's make sure that this new player is fitted with plenty of draw power to get through their deck, beginning with Ambition's Cost, a very simple draw three and lose three life spell, followed by Read the Bones, which can draw two, scry two, and then cause the player to lose two life. Now, it is going to be important whenever a player draws these cards to remind them that life is a resource and it's okay to pay the cost on these cards to get their benefits. Also, we do want this deck to be a fairly aggressive deck because we want to incentivize a new player to actually further the game state instead of just turtling and then losing. So a lot of the draw engine is going to be cards like Reconnaissance Mission, Bident of Thassa, and Coastal Piracy and Military Intelligence. All draw spells that sit on the board forever and reward the turn player with draw if they are aggressive with their creatures by attacking in. Then we have Distant Melody to reward the player for getting a field full of fairies on the board. Talion's Messenger that says if you attack with one or more fairies, you can then draw a card and discard a card and put counters on fairies if you so choose. Into the Fey Court lets you draw three cards and then create a bunch of fairy tokens. Well, create a single fairy token with flying. Not really a bunch. I wish it was a bunch. I almost read this as playing three fairy tokens. Then we have Fairy Formation, which can create a blue fairy creature token with flying and also draw you a card whenever you spend uh, mana into it, giving a new player a great mana sink. And finally, Rankle Master of Pranks. With multiple modes, you can can pick whenever you deal combat damage with him, either making all players discard a card, making all players draw a card and lose a life, or making every player sacrifice a creature. There's no mode that does not actively benefit the game plan of this deck, so Rankle is an obvious choice. Also, it's a fairy, so there is that. But with the draw package figured out, we need to make sure that this player is able to adequately deal with threats as they come onto the board. So let's go ahead and get into that section next. 
In an ideal world, it doesn't matter how many removal spells we put in one of these new decks, they all need to serve one purpose. Remove a threat from the board and be very, very, very simple to understand. So there is a 11 card targeted removal package in this deck, starting with one of the most simple cards any player could learn, counter spell, just countering a target spell, followed by counter squall, which can target a non-creature spell for countering and also cause its controller to lose to life. Feed the Swarm lets you blow up an artif or an enchantment or a creature. Meteor Golem, my pride and joy, blows up any non-land permanent an opponent might have. Spell Stutter will counter any spell unless its controller plays two, plus an additional one for every fairy you control, giving a little bit more flavor to this kind of deck. Sower of Temptation is a fairy wizard that enters the battlefield and gains control of any creature as long as the Sower is on the battlefield. So very, very easy for a new player to get play a fairy and steal something on the board. Violet Paul is another fairy card, but this one is not a creature. It blows up a non-black creature and then puts a fairy rogue into play. Again, we've picked this one due to the flavor that comes with it. Thorn Wind Fairy says it can deal one damage to target creature or player. This means that a new player can either use this for burn purposes or for removing small threats from the board. Also, if a card like Vraska has ulted, this can now tap and just blow up cards on the board, but that's a fun little little bit of tech that's probably never going to come up in most games. Soul Manipulation can counter a creature spell or give you a creature from your graveyard to your hand, you know, or both, whichever one. I figured a modal spell that lets you pick all of the options wouldn't be too much for a newer player. Murder is a very simple blow up a creature card and Stolen by the Fae returns a creature with mana value X to its owner's hand, giving you that many blue fairy creature tokens with flying, which of course we are going to use to burn our opponents down. This is probably one of the most complicated cards I could have picked for this deck, but I chose this one because again, it's very flavorful and it fits with the theme of what our deck is trying to do oh so well. There's also two board wipes in this deck, and like with most of the board wipes that I've tried to pick for our decks, I'm trying to pick stuff that will either not remove our commander, be asymmetrical, or has some kind of guaranteed upside. So, Necromantic Selection was my first pick, as we can use this to keep Obira on the board after blowing up the board, and Tegwill's Scouring, which says you can cast it as though it had flash by tapping three untapped creatures you control with flying. And then it destroys all creatures and gives you three 1-1 one, one Black Fairy Rogue tokens. So while not perfectly asymmetrical, the fact that we can cast this on an opponent's turn, give ourselves three fairies, and then on our turn attack with them is enough of a reason for me to have picked this one specifically. Also, like with most things, it's very on theme and very flavorful. So I like it as an option for these kinds of decks. I think that starter decks should function mechanically on top of being very very thematic if we can help it. That said, let's go ahead and top things up with the ramp and mana selected for this deck, but it's very low to the ground, so it might not be that complicated. As per usual, the name of the game is simplicity over anything else. So most of these are going to be your basic generic mana rocks. Arcane Signet, Charcoal Diamond, Sky Diamond, Talisman of Dominance, and Demir Signet are all two mana mana rocks in their own right. Commander Sphere gives the option to draw a card if we desperately need it later in the game. Unstable Obelisk gives a new player the ability to remove a problem permanent later in the game. I'm going to be honest, I kind of think Unstable uh, Obelisk should be in every Every single new person deck. Like I like Meteor Golem, I think that giving a newbie the ability to get rid of anything ever if it ends up causing them a problem, even at a high mana rate, is just such a tantalizing thing to have available. Then Wayfair's Bobble can get a basic land out of the deck, and Mocking Sprite makes the instants and sorceries in the spell cost in the deck cost one less. Now, while we only have six instants and eight sorceries, it is a flying fairy in its own right, and I think that's going to be enough to justify the card in the deck. Now, there's only one issue. In the previous decks that I built, I tried to have mostly basic lands, if not all basic lands, so that new players would not get overwhelmed with the idiosyncrasies of the mana base. 
we cannot make that decision here. When we are making a deck for a new player, we have to make certain that they have access to mana that they can use. So while there are 13 swamps and 16 islands in this deck, there are also some dual lands in the form of Command Tower, Dark Water Catacombs, Fetid Pools, Tainted Isle, Sunken Hollow, and Choked Estuary. I would have also liked to include stuff like River of Tears, but honestly, the play pattern of cards like like River of Tears is not something that I want to throw onto a new player, having to sequence their mana in a very specific way to make sure that they do not end up screwing up is not really all that fun. There are also five fetching lands on top of the dual lands that are present in the deck, beginning with Ash Barrens, which can base land cycle if the new player needs it. Then there's Terramorphic Expanse, Escape Tunnel, and Evolving Wilds. Honestly, I think these should be simple enough for a player to figure out why they need to be using them to fix their mana. Followed, finally, by a Myriad Landscape, which has the added benefit of being able to ramp for the player. I've tried to make sure there are as few tapped lands in this deck as humanly possible, possible, as I do not feel like playing a turn behind everybody else at the table is a fun experience for new players. Honestly, that was one of the gripes I had with the starter decks that Wizards made, is they included a decent bit of tapped mana, and if your tapped mana isn't giving you major benefit, I really don't think it should be in the deck. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> In conclusion, I do think that Obira Dreaming Duelist is a wonderful deck for a new player to start out with. Not only is the commander very straightforward, but the upgrade path for a deck like this is also very straightforward. You just find better and more complex fairies as you get more familiar with the game. If you are a player who wants to onboard some new players into the game, this should be a wonderful starting deck if they are wanting to play something with a couple more colors than the monocolor decks that I already built. But let's say that you are a new player or you are a player uh, who has not started Magic yet and wants to get into it. Do you think this is a deck that you would want to give a shot? Let me know in the comment section below. Let me know what y'all's thoughts are. I would love hearing all of your feedback. And with that said... I'll go ahead and give some closing thoughts, the, the basic YouTuber stuff. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe, all that other fun stuff that the algorithm enjoys. Maybe go subscribe to me on Patreon if you're feeling really frisky. That all said, thank you all for watching my video. I greatly appreciate it. I hope if you are a new player, you found this useful. And I hope if you're trying to bring some new players into the game, then maybe you'll get some utility out of this as well. That said, thank you all for watching, and insert end of video tagline here. Hey, I just quickly want to give a thank you to all of my wonderful patrons who keep this show running. YouTube and Twitch are a pretty bumpy ride at the best of times, and the stability a Patreon provides me is worth more than I can say here. I'd also like to thank each and every one of my $20 and up patrons here. They would be Red Joker, Britzkrieg, Cameron, Dren, Gemshin, Smiling DM, Poundini, Mabity Babity, Naomi, Isaac, Agamotto, Jordan, Ravi, Juni, Kiratorian, Prisma, all of you, Sagitta, I'm not saying that part, and Starlight. And finally, thank you to everyone else that helps keep this channel alive. While you're here, why not check out another video? And thank you for watching.